Each year, thousands of people are killed in fires. For any company, a major fire can lead to bankruptcy due to lost customers. Combustible insulation poses an extra risk to people, property and the environment. Yet in many countries, insulation materials with poor fire properties are still allowed. In the second fire trial, we will now test three of the most commonly used insulation materials for flat roofs. The three houses are identical except for the insulation material which lies on top of the profiled steel deck. The first house is insulated with rock wool. The house in the middle with fire retarded expanded polystyrene. And the last house with polyurethane in North America, also called ISO. The insulation is covered by two layers of bitumen roofing felt. In the center of each roof is a skylight. Each fire load equals 12 kilos of wood per square meter. This is 60% less than in a normal industrial or commercial building. During the first few minutes, the fires develop identically. The flames and the smoke from the wooden cribs become more visible. This is typically when the fire brigade will be alerted. It takes only five minutes to ignite the chemically fire retarded polystyrene insulation. The smoke from the polystyrene roof contains poisonous dioxins and corrosive hydrobromic acids. In Europe's biggest insulation market, this material is classified difficult to ignite. After six minutes, the polyurethane insulation to the right also catches fire. The smoke from the polyurethane contains nitrogen oxides and highly toxic cyanic gases. The polyurethane and polystyrene roofs are totally engulfed in flames. In an industrial building a thousand times larger than this 15 square meter test house, the material and environmental damage would be considerable. Despite an inside temperature of almost a thousand degrees, the temperature on the rock wall roof remains below 50 degrees Celsius. The flames and the smoke in this module come from the fire load itself. Under good circumstances, the fire brigade will arrive five minutes after they've been alerted. Two minutes late of stopping the polystyrene and polyurethane flashovers. With long distances, traffic jams or difficult access to the building, it may take the fire brigade 20 minutes to arrive at the scene and deploy their equipment. The molten burning droplets from the polystyrene roof may not only cause the fire to spread inside the building. Building users or firefighters who get these burning droplets onto their skin can also become badly injured. The poisonous smoke becomes more intense and the fire brigade is asked to extinguish the fire. The fire has affected the three constructions to a different extent. This is all that is left of the polystyrene roof. The fire has also left the polyurethane roof severely damaged. At the rock wall construction, the heat has deformed the steel deck, yet the rock wall insulation prevented the spread of fire. Despite an inside temperature of almost a thousand degrees, the protective rock wall on the walls in all three houses is intact. 